this week on Not Just Another Sex Podcast. I had a bad experience with um, telling someone all of my truths um, at the end of my marriage. Um, I have been going to, and, and I, I see why it came to an end. By the by the end of it, I was a different person. I have went through therapy, EMDR. I, I was doing so many different things mm-hmm. and just really transforming and just really allowing the person that I really was to come out, not all of the defense mechanisms and all the things okay. that I had to do to stay safe in my home. I was able to just blossom and be like, okay, here's the actual Samaya. Okay. And I wanted to, well, I also didn't think my marriage was ending. So okay. I was like, okay, I really want to tell him the whole truth, everything that has happened and gang rape here and de- like the mm-hmm. in-depthness of like really what happened. And my fear was always that when I shared that story, that it would, I would be seen as nasty or like, yeah. I don't want to touch her or mm-hmm. things like that. And the day after I told him, he broke off the relationship. Hey, sugar. I feel like there are so many different things that I need to learn as an adult. I'm this nasty on a regular day, like on a Tuesday. I am your host, Samaya Burton. And don't worry, it's not just another sex podcast. Welcome back to Not Just Another Sex Podcast. My name is Samaya and I'm your host for today. And I'm very excited to sit down with you guys for this episode. So before we get into everything, we are going to start off with a review. Um, This one is from... Lakamo, Locomo, doesn't matter. It says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Every episode of this podcast is a gem. I appreciate your authenticity and dedication to this work. Each of the videos on here and on Patreon is so valuable and knowledgeable. I'm a barber in New Orleans, and I had to share your content with a client that was sharing a very similar idea to the content house down here in NOLA. Thank you for being an inspiration. You are appreciated. Ooh, I love me with the Nola accents. Nice. Ooh, thank you so much. I feel like this is the, like one of the first ones that I've read from a man. So I appreciate that more than you know. Um, you guys know that the show, I mean, yes, I do it for me, but also it's about you guys. So the stories that I'm sharing, the vulnerability, the accountability, the mistakes, the embarrassing parts, I'm sharing it in hopes that you don't have to go through the exact same thing as me, or either you know that you're not alone or that you can have the tools that you need to do the work that you need to do to be a better you. Um, So when you guys leave these reviews, it lets me know that I'm on the right path. I am a person and I get embarrassed. I get nervous. I get imposter syndrome. I get all of those things. So when you guys chime in, like it costs zero dollars and zero cents just to be like, yo, I fucks with the show. So I appreciate you guys for doing that so much. Um, and if you haven't, please leave a um, leave a review and write it below wherever you listen to this show. Um, but we have a great episode for you guys today. I'm super excited. Per usual, we have Dr. Ty E. Muhammad, licensed psychosexual therapist and author with us today. Say hey. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You don't do haze. <laughs> you look so nice. <laughs> Thank you. Trying to be like you when I grow dapper. up. Hey, little dap, dap, day. That's that shot town coming out of me. It, you know what? It's a little Midwest swang up in here today. Okay, St. Louis over here, Chicago over there. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. That, that means it's gonna be extra fiery over here today. That part. All right. Go ahead and tell the folks what your sign is, because I think that they should they should understand. This well, well for my old school people, we're gonna call it the L7, right? L7 you think meaning square, but L is Libra. Seven because Libra is the seven signs, the zodiac. So I'm at what what you call it, L7. And because my born day is on 1020, I share that with brother Snoop Dogg. So you already know what you're getting into today. Snoop Dogg so fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank thank you. <laughs> you felt like it was redirected really to you. I feel that. Um <laughs> Aries Libra energy on the screen today, y'all. If y'all mm-hmm. are not watching the episode, please make sure that after you check it out on your favorite streaming platform that you check it out on YouTube. We are sitting on a new set today at the Something Extraordinary Content House. And I'm excited. I feel like it's giving like, therapize me. Yeah. <laughs> therapize me. Yeah, fix me up. Patch me up and send me out. So today's episode, I'm super excited. I have you here today because mm-hmm. I am taking some accountability. Okay. <sighs> accountability with uh my dating life which is kind of extinct at this moment so today Mm -hmm. we are talking about getting back into the dating world after you've realized you're the problem after going through um some healing some transformation some change some acknowledging um and all those things i think that we talk about like being the problem being toxic a lot Mm -hmm. um but what do you do after that and 
I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like terrified of getting back out there and trying again and um, already having, um, you know, I've, I've been divorced and I have a son. So like some of the things that I wish for scare me because it's like, OK, am I going to what if what if it all goes wrong again? So Got this it. entire episode is catered to that. Um, and so we're just going to jump right in. You want to walk through the show with me? Well, let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, so we start off the show with the adult tip of the day. The adult tip of the day is like a little five minute, put it in your pocket, my therapist says, or okay. just a um, a good thought or a little life hack, like get you a cleaner. It'll take some, you know, take mm-hmm. some stress off of you just a little bit because one day we look up and you're the grown up in the room and people looking that at you part. to figure it out. Right. Um, so we just break it down to little bite sized pieces. Um, mm-hmm. Today's adult tip of the day is projection is easier than reflection when your ego controls the narrative. Mm. Yes. Um, And I thought that was fitting because um, I think that especially when it comes to dating, it's easier for me to project on like what people are doing and why it's so difficult and all those things. Um, But really, the truth is that reflecting, I'm scared. You know, I'm scared Mm. to get back out there. I'm scared of making the same mistakes again, especially when I do this show and I'm so vulnerable about the mistakes that I'm making. And, you know, it's just it's difficult. But I know that. um, Projection is also really easy when you don't want to take accountability for just being wrong. And like in the dating world, um, I've been the problem. I was a huge part of my divorce. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't all me. It always takes two. But just not really understanding or being aware of who I was. Um, And I know that a lot of people are like, you know, how are you so accountable to the changes that you need to make? I don't project anymore. Like I I just sit with it. You know, like that's true. I do do that. You know, I do do that. So, mm-hmm. um, did you have anything you want to add to that one? Well, I want to clarify something you said. You said For sure. Your dating world is being... It's, it's, it's a little dried up right now. You said now. extinct? What was it? It's you given use? extinct. Extinct. Right? Well... It's just non-existent at non-existent. this moment. So, my disagreement with that is that your dating um, prowess is very powerful right now because you learn to date yourself. Yes, Which I, I what, guess that's what I'm doing. That's right, all I'm doing. Right, so who's, but all is the good because that's the problem in the most relationships. People aren't dating themselves. Yeah. People don't know. Like, I, you got to know you. And once you know you, now I can get to know someone else. If you're not loving on you right, then nothing else matters. So during this time, when you say, you know what, doing self-reflection and being patient with yourself and talking to yourself the way you talk to God or the way God talks, you, just being present and listening. And now when you come into when you come into the, the dating arena because you have patience with yourself, because now you know you, you know what to look for in that man. Now everything makes better. It makes sense. Yeah. As opposed to you, you said earlier in your marriage, you was, you was getting to know you. Like, you know, you're young and trying to get to know you, have a child, and that's a whole new dynamics. But now you say, you know what? And, and you say it's scary. It shouldn't be scary because let me tell you why. It's like preparing to eat your favorite meal. That ain't scary. I could chow down on something. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're like, yo, this food about to get it. But you're relaxed. You're comfortable. And it's the same thing with, you know, let's say it's your favorite meal is chicken, right? This place you've been to, the chicken isn't good. Mm, the place that don't make you scared to eat it. Right. Exactly. You're still going to try it again. You said, There's jobs yeah. you've been to that wasn't good jobs, but you know you got to work. So for me, dating is, is a, being a relationship is a necessity. It's not a want. It's a need. And but we go into it with this, like you said, this fear, and the fear comes from because you've had bad experiences. But yeah, we all have had bad experiences. But the mindset has to be that's part of it's part of who I am. Yeah. It makes it's gonna make. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Five Heartbeats. Yeah. Nothing yes. like this, right? <laughs> I <laughs> we're, wish. We're, 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 <laughs> when Robert Townsend found out his wife had situations with his brother, messed around with his brother, and they was at this award ceremony to honor the group. He says, well, today is supposed to be the happiest day of my life, but it's actually the saddest day of my life because I'm quitting the five heartbeats. And he was like, a, author one, a writer, a critic once said, I'll become a better writer once I've experienced, about love, once I've experienced more pain. Now mm. I get what he's talking about. And that part of that movie was so dynamic for me as a, as a thinker because people don't understand, you, if you're truly into love, you got to go through pain. Yeah. Now you can exude. But what most people do, they use that pain to cause more pain. Mm-hmm. I've been hurt, so I'm going to hurt you. Or I'm going to hold on to that pain. So somebody comes into the world, comes into your life, and they just want to shower you with love and, and joy and peace. But because you all dysfunctional and toxic, you just, 
You, I'm not dysfunctional. No, no, I'm not, I'm just, I just I, want y'all to know. Hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically. Right. So, yes. but now what you do, you give that toxicity to that brother. Yeah. Because when you feel him, but when you at peace with yourself, but that's where it gets difficult in our society because a lot of people walk around and not at peace. No, not at all. But, you know, we're going to get into it. We're going we're gonna to get into it. Let's have it. Hey, guys, I've been getting asked, are you going to do a Black Friday deal? Honestly, I have no idea, but I do think I have some news that just might suffice. If you guys haven't noticed, we have been updating all of our Sexual Essentials content, including our masterclasses. So for the last time, the three masterclasses that have sold over 10,000 copies is available now in one bundle. Yes, that's the Mouth Masterclass, the Dick Writing 101, and the Masturbation and Squirting class. All three of those are available in one course now for 100 bucks. If you didn't know, each of those classes is normally a hundred dollars a piece so make sure that you take advantage of this because it's for a limited time only because these classes are being taken offline all right enjoy and back to the show so before we get into the topic for today we have a segment called twitter talk and okay. it's just to pay homage to black twitter um because at some point twitter was this huge platform and black twitter became like a space and people are like wait what is black twitter that a spe- is there a certain tab for black twitter right. or no it's just like the way that black people do everything we go in and we add swag on everything and mm-hmm. there's humor there's ignorance there's you know and there's a lot of fact and just bringing attention to a lot of things um that we otherwise wouldn't know um so mm-hmm. this is just a segment to talk about just like how twitter really is where there's something controversial or just okay. oh what do you think or whatever so Um, Today's question is, what's the single most important thing needed when creating relationships? And I wanted us both to respond, me as a person who sits in the in the seat, getting my 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 therapizing, therapizing. And then you the one doing the therapizing. Yes. What's your take on um, Mm -hmm. what you think the most important thing needed for creating relationships is? And then you want me to go first? You want to go first? You go first. Let me see what you got. Mine is, for me, I think it differs for each person. Um, I think mine is discipline. Okay. And that's actually today's episode, Discipline with Dating. Okay. Um, and I say that because my my background, my story, um, I'm not going to say I'm working uphill, but the things that were put into me, um, okay. being raised and just, you know, we've talked about some of my background, um, just being raised as a, as a, um, as a daughter in a, in a parental home where there's parental molestation and your mom Mm -hmm. stays with him. And then there's also just abuse, whether it's emotional or just with your physical needs and so much bad karma, so many generational patterns, um, the things that there are no examples of, of how it's supposed to be. And so now that I've went through, um, and not that it's done, but now that I've went through Mm -hmm. a process of just awareness, understanding where I played a part. And like, even though those things aren't my fault, that the healing and the way I project to the world is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I realize the biggest thing for me when it comes to dating anybody or anything else is discipline, because I have to make sure that I have my me time scheduled. I have to make sure that I don't, um, that I know what my triggers are, that I'm making time for my friends or things like that, because just being raised with a a lack of love um, Mm. makes you, can turn you into a chronic people pleaser or just having no boundaries whatsoever. And so having those boundaries with myself first and just having the discipline to say, okay, did I check in with this? Did I eat this right? Like Mm. I have to live by my calendar or I'm going to go with what I feel. And I've understood that I can't change necessarily how I feel. I can change my relationship with the things that I feel. But what I know is I can't trust that. I have to trust what I know and the way that I need to treat myself within my boundaries. And discipline for me is that. That's the most important thing for me in a relationship. Nice. Yeah. It's funny. When you think of discipline, uh, I think of Moses versus Jesus. Right? Hmm. So, you know, as you go into the church, you find more women there than men. You go into a masjid or a mosque, you find more men than women. Women are attracted to love. Men are attracted to discipline. Moses brought discipline to the world and law and order. Jesus brought love. Hmm. But you need a combination of them both in order to have successful relationships, and especially with raising of children. So that discipline side of you is saying, hey, I want structure. I want, that's something we've gotten away from as a society. Everything is just free flowing. Everybody be yeah. free. No, <laughs> we need some of both. Right, we need yeah. exactly. You know, um, but yeah, I like that word. But that's a that's a it's it's a it's a difficult word to to sustain. It's one thing obtaining it, 
but to sustain that discipline. And then, because the most difficult part for me about people recognizing being disciplined is that people are going to criticize you for being disciplined or you, you're too, you you want things in too much order. Mm. And it's not because they want what's best for you. It's because you're making them check themselves. It's like if you ever, you know, if someone is exercising or, girl, you're getting too small, you're getting too small. <laughs> or why are you doing all that? You're doing too much. Because yeah. you're making them check themselves. And that's mm. how people don't want to do that. Or whatever it is, you know, if you're doing anything that's potentially good for you, yeah. people are like you're doing too much. I tell people all the time, I love organized fun. I'm like, I'm hella fun, organized. Right. Right. Like, I, 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 <laughs> but I say that because I do have a level of anxiety. I do yeah. have, and also the way that I think, like especially with that Virgo Moon, I think, I overthink, 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 mm. and sometimes I don't have time for it. And also, I love the idea of allowing myself the the permission to just indulge in my favorite things all the time. So okay. a lot of times I might eat the same thing every single day. But if it's my favorite to me, I'm not thinking about, you know what yeah, I'm saying, that right. it's every day. Right. Um, but my life has so much craziness. Like mm. being a sexual educator, teaching oral sex classes and mm. being in production, content house and shooting these types of shows. And I like to jump out of planes. I like to skydive. There's so okay. much that's not organized about me as well. So like these little things that I don't want to waste my time with Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, what should I eat? We'll be sitting there for two days right. waiting for me to figure out what I want to eat. That annoys right. me. So I know what, what bothers me and what yes. doesn't. So, yeah. you so know. It's funny, you mentioned skydiving, right? So I've sky, skydove before and skydived before. And, um, and what people don't get about skydiving, and I've done it a couple of times, is that when you, the difficult part is one, when you go through the, the initially you gotta watch the video, right? Yeah. Then you get into this janky plane that's, <laughs> that's, that's doing all this. Yeah. But what people don't understand until you've actually experienced it, once you jump out, it's so beautiful. It's so sweet. Like you literally meditate in air. Yes. Because you think people think like I thought, it'd be like a roller coaster, like you feel mm-hmm. all in your stomach. None of that. It it's, goes against the science of right, it. Right. Exactly. It's so peaceful. But going back to relationship, what I was saying to you earlier. When you let go and let God, mm. that's when everything it, it, it mm-hmm. happens. Don't be therapizing me. <laughs> Don't be. But, that we, that's what we're gonna name the episode. Don't be therapizing me. <laughs> but, 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 when you, but when you put it in that in that in that when you articulate it that way, or when you uh, give it that type of structure, same when you yeah. say, "Let go, let God," and now you're walking into your light the right way. But when you try to control it, that's when it doesn't go right. But okay. but but like I said, your your word discipline, I honor that. I think it's amazing. Um, and once you again on that journey, you're gonna find out so much about yourself because it's like, well, for example, with clean maintaining your, for example, something like your bedroom, and say, well, you know, after this minute, get up, I'm gonna clean my bedroom every morning. That just having that structure, yeah, and having that, like I say, being organized, you know, in your thoughts, and say, hey, if I got something, do it. Is everything in order? That's a lot. Most people can't do it. And see, I, I'm such, and I tell people all the time, like, I'm a greedy mm-hmm. bitch. I want mm-hmm. everything. I want right. all the things. And so the only way for me to get all those things is for me to fit it in. I'm like, okay, I can do this if I do this at this time or that at that time. And so I'm right. big on that. And I also just, I never forget. Like, for me to have a bad memory, that's funny. But right. the things that I want, yes. I rarely forget. Like, mm-hmm. take that travel van out there. Mm-hmm. I always wanted a camper. I, I've always loved camping since I was a little girl. As soon as I got enough money. Outside in the woods. D- with, yeah. with Jason from Friday 13th. I was thinking he, like the bears. You lost your mind. <laughs> Black folks the do, bears not, and the do not go into the woods. And fishing? <laughs> oh, God. You want me to take you fishing? I don't kill animals. Uh, okay, see, now he took it a whole Now I can't even say that. <laughs> can I now catch him put it back in? Sure, yes. You can okay. catch and release. Okay. I mean, it's that's what she to said. Have a... But anyway, so you know what? To, to what's, your, what's your characteristic? What's the <laughs> single most important thing you think people need when creating relationships? Do the you think the most important thing people need when creating relationships? Um, I would say is extreme joy. And let me define extreme joy. You have to be able. To, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna simplify this. You have to be able to define, give your definition of love. Because a lot of times we go into relationships and we think, well, you're supposed to love on me. Well, what, what does that mean? Mm. What's your definition of love? Yeah. Right. And, and be able to map that out. Give me the blueprint of you. What makes you happy? 
And so if I can define for you and or to you what my definition of love is, and you can give that to me and you do the same, now we're rocking and rolling. When you go think about in school, they give you a syllabi. If you follow this, you pass the class. If you pass the test, with all A's, you get an A. If you fail the test, you fail, but you have the outline. Yeah. I'm going to give you an outline on how to love me. If you give that to me, we're good. Now, there can be deviations. from the, But you got to cut a member number three. I like pancakes every Sunday. No, I no, I no longer like pancakes on Sundays. You know, but it's you got to like let me son. know. But don't, but don't <laughs> look at me. This is a, a common theme with, with women, with love. You should have been able to look at my face and tell me mm. like that. Are you talking about that telepathy? Yes. The, the, okay. the telepathy love? Men are not mind readers. Tell them what you need. And now, if you articulate it to him and you tell him, or you articulate it, and he doesn't give it, at least you can say, but you can't go by the, you should have known based on my expression. Yeah. Because your expression changes. And again, at work, when something needs to be done, what do you do? They, they tell you the command, or they send you an email. This is what we need from you. It was like, well, you should have known we need you to order 3,000 packs of, of uh, you know, some paper. Paper, right. It's like, <laughs> Well, how? Well, last year we did. Well, again, reiterate it. Send me an email. Let me know what you need. So answer the question again, being able to define love. Okay. Okay. I like your that. Love. So you need to know yourself. You exactly. need to know yourself. Well, today's episode is definitely about um, discipline within dating and just helping um, others transition. I'm going to use myself as an example. Um, for today, just like for the story, you guys have been following along with my story for a while. Um, and just to give you some background, I was married at 22. Um, we mm -hmm. were married for six years, had a son. And around the time of divorce, it was also the time that I really came into um, the awareness of what was really going on within my family. Mm -hmm. um, having a child was the ultimate trigger for me because I realized how many things were inappropriate and what was wrong and that my parents were having us keep family business, mm. quote unquote, right. um, close to the chest. And so I realized that almost everything that I was doing was incorrect because the measuring system that I was using was wrong. If my mm. parents were right, that meant that a lot of the things that, that were really wrong, I thought were. Yes. I thought yes. were right. Right. And so all the, the good guys out there, I'm thinking, mm-mm, I want somebody like my daddy. Right. A molester man? That's what mm. you want? Is that, mm. You know, but right. it's, but we don't think of that. And um, and it's not to say like they're totally all bad or any of that. That's right. not what I'm saying. Mm. But there is a level of accountability when you raise children to empathize with their abuser. Right. Um, and so that can make us chronic people pleasers because you're in a household where your parents are expecting you to go off their emotional changes. They're not emotionally regulated as adults. Mm. So the children are in there with their ass cheeks clenched like... Oh, the attitude change. Oh, let me do this to, to help make this better. And right. that's the way to receive love at home. So now you're going out here dating and anytime somebody's attitude changes or whatever, you're like, oh, how can I jump through hoops to fix that for you or mm. whatever? And you're not allowed to have boundaries. Right. Um, you're not allowed to have those boundaries. So you also don't know how to respect them. So you can't even attract the type of partner that you need because that type of partner wouldn't even be attracted to you, right. you know? So we've went through all of those things in a lot of episodes. Make sure I catch up, catch up on all of the episodes. Mm -hmm. But here we are today talking about getting back into dating when you know your problem areas and where to start. Um, and so I was wondering about maybe some cop common patterns of dating, like when you're dating from mm -hmm. trauma, maybe to help people recognize um, that we might be talking to them, that this episode might be for right. you. Um, and just you having clients, like, do you have any um, take on that? Like just the common patterns of People that are, and I know everybody has trauma. Yes. But some common patterns um, that show up when people are dating from the perspective of their trauma. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of some of the patterns again is people not being happy with themselves. People are always finding fault in you and and always blaming you because they're looking to you to fill that void that they can't fill themselves. So they're always pushing at you, always picking it, not picking at you, but always insisting that you're doing wrong because you're not reading the cues right. Mm -hmm. And that's what, but I don't know the cues, but because I'm toxic and typically what we go, what we do, both parties are toxic coming into the relationship. That's just what it is. Let's call it what it is. Yeah. So my toxicity and your toxicity, but somehow we're trying to be non-toxic. We're trying to have this thing called love. And unconditional love is something that just really or rarely can happen in, in the relationship dynamics because unconditional means without expectations. 
typically we only unconditionally love our children because mm-hmm. there's no expectation. It's just we're going to love them regardless. And then there are blood. There's something to be said about our children versus someone you don't know. Like, for example, if I meet someone and, and, and she's 45, that's 45 years she hasn't known me. Yeah. And, that's, you know, in, in 50-something years she hasn't known me. So it's like, well, 45 years she hasn't known me because she's only 45. So that you have to start there. Like, we, there's no they way I'm going to get... a whole life before you. Right. A whole life. A whole life. And, they, and especially if they're doing well and taking care of themselves, you have to take that into account. Like, how do I complement your life? Or going back to your question, if you come into my world and you see, for example, people drink excessively, smoke excessively, um, porn, gamble, you see these, these characters like, okay... What are you running from? What are you? What's? Why are you overly indulged in this? For what? Because it's not normal. But we've classified that as like, oh, dude, just you know, he drink every day after work. Okay, well, okay, well, why? Why are you drinking every day? What? What? What are you numbing yourself for? You know, what are you trying to? What, and that's why we we joked about it before the taping about interviewing. You know, I tell my clients all the time if you. Want to get to know the person you're dating? Yeah. Ask if you can interview or have a conversation with the past three people they've dated. I mean, that's, you know, and they say, sure. And think about you talking to one of the guy you're dating, talking to his ex, and she's like, oh, he was amazing, just didn't work out. She's like, girl, he used to beat my ass. And, you, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you, better, you better make sure you have his food on the table when he gets home, where he's going to beat your ass. Place. Right. But then he tells you, like, no, she was... You know, she used to do stuff to me. That's why I did what I had to do. But no, if you beat her ass, he's going to beat your ass. If that goes back to what you said about therapy. Now, if he's going to therapy and deal with anger management and he's dealt with his issues, then that's something totally different. Because yeah. I do believe in people can start over. People can, you know, get healed. But that's a question that needs to be asked. You know what um, I like about you saying that, you know, if you meet somebody and they're 45 years old, they've had 45 years. I think that yes. puts in retrospect the way that we lose sense of time when we start dating people. Mm-hmm. And I've heard you say before that, you know, and I guess it's kind of like, I guess, two or three fold. I've heard you mention how first dates for like a certain period of time should yes. go or dates should go for a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. But also I think that there is a level of ego that comes out when we're dating and we think somebody should, we have a false um, relationship with obsession. Okay. Well, everybody think they want an obsessive partner. Mm-hmm. But just like, you know, he made a joke about like, oh, he used to be my ass. Like, it's a joke. But also, if you've never had, like, that's some real shit. Like, okay. if, you know what I'm saying? Like, domestic abuse. But guess what? Okay. Obsession, a partner actually being obsessed with you, mm-hmm. there's nothing cute or funny about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, that is a form of, of abuse. Um, but I think that when we, when we start dating people and I don't know if it's men or women or, or who, but people start dating people and they're like, Oh, they ain't even calling me today. Or like, if you can go the whole day without talking to me, then we're not dating. And like all these online things. And I'm like, y'all, that doesn't make sense because like in real life, you can be super quote unquote, use lightly obsessed or like infatuated with your partner or whatever. And if you have a life of your own, Mm -hmm. you literally can go all day without like, you don't have to act married all of a sudden. I think that a lot of people jump from, I just got your number being so upset. And they'd be like, you know, it's only been three weeks. You know, it's only right. been three weeks. Right. Y'all already spend a night together. And I'm not saying like I haven't been there or done that. Gotcha. That's not what I'm saying. But I also understand how that made no sense. It literally mm. made no sense. This right. is a person that you haven't known. It's only because you're attracted to them. Yeah. If you hadn't have been attracted, you would never do any of that stuff. And the truth is you don't know somebody after right. three weeks or whatever. So can you give some take on just like how we don't... <laughs> We don't really respect time when it yeah. comes to dating and, you and, know. And, and you've heard me say this before to you about women when you first meet a man and stop going to dinner, stop going to the movies, stop going to his house and do something like going to the park. Go get some smoothies and let's go to the park together because now what you do, you force that man to talk. You force him to communicate with you. And what happens when we dinner, you don't get a chance to know anybody doing dinner. You may you have, sure? If you're there for two or three hours... And then I find like, out how you like your lamb chops cooked. Right, that right, matters. That, that, you want that a part. hockey puck, you want a medium rare. Right, right. Yeah. We, right, right. I need to know. Yeah, but <laughs> but, but now, now we get into that equation where women are women are the food as men are the sex. The average man don't really care about food like that. Now, what? There, there's an old saying that a key, key to a man's heart is food. That's bullshit. The key to a man's heart is head or sex. 
that key to a woman's get heart. Out, get out my therapy <laughs> set. This is my grown up <laughs> set for the day. And you. Right. <laughs> Hey, I mean, you, you asked me for a reason because we we we, go, we keep it all the way at one hundred. You, you ask the average man which which you prefer a great meal or great sex, great sex all day. You ask the average woman that outside of you fight, especially outside, don't ask Aries that. <laughs> right? don't, you know, what I'm don't ask Aries, Aries or Virgo. Don't ask them that. Um, but at the average woman say, give me the meal first, then I can come and deal with you. You follow me? But majority of women, this goes back to something else you said about that time frame and being all day without calling and you being an Aries, a fire sign, that's very much who you are because you can, you've been conditioned just by your zodiac sign alone to enjoy you. Like you can go off and do your own thing. But if I'm a water sign, for example, a cancer, uh, Scorpio, uh, who's very clean, typically very clingy, mm-hmm. they, that, that's, that's a different language, but they need to make sure that man understand that from the beginning. Like, Hey, I'll, I go in, I move fast. I get in, I get clean. If I, if I dig you, I dig you. It, now, I agree with you, it's not healthy, but at least I'm giving that to you from the beginning. Like, hey. It's I, really who you are, though. Exactly. Not this, just infatuation. Like, this is who I am naturally. Like, yes. I, when I make friends, it kind of gets serious. I'm, I'm a good judge of character. So exactly. I, move fast. I get what you're saying. Yes. I, I, I do think that there is an exception. I'm not saying that nobody should ever move this fast or it can't become serious. I'm talking about when you're moving so fast and it's because you're not aware of what's going oh, no, on no, what you just saying, got caught up but saying, i'm talking about for them yeah, what, so no, they're what, what, what you're saying is correct they you shouldn't move fast but i'm saying some people innately is who they are yeah like they like we let's love i love come on yeah oh my god i saw you yesterday and this you know they they, they fly to hawaii together you know and i mean people, i could go for a little hawaii <laughs> <laughs> so, you think some people thing. are naturally like for example my personality type I receive people immediately, hmm. but you do one thing to cross me or to show me you can't be trusted or betray me, we're done. Yeah. Then there's people who then now they sit back and they're like, no, prove to me I should let you in. So you got two different type of personality types as it relates to that. Yeah. And so if I'm the type of person like, man, I receive and I meet a woman who's the same way, we're going to click initially. We're going to click because I've like for example, I've had one night stands. I've had women like. You know, men at a wedding, they say, you know, we at a hotel getting of it in. Of course at a wedding. Right. <laughs> they not already yeah. buttered up. Yeah, that, Gave that, us that, some cake, too. That, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know, <laughs> We're smart and not hard. Now she get the cream to go with the cake. Yeah, that, that was on my your ther- head. My therapy <laughs> My little adult therapy <laughs> said, It ain't even me today, y'all. I know. But, but just having that mindset that people are different. Yeah. And as you said earlier, if it's been... You put it into retrospect, like it's been 45 years, you have not known me. So don't try to come into my life and change me. Come into my mm. life and try to compliment me. Look around, see, the, for example, I walk into your studio, I see the way it's organized, I see things like, why would I come in here with you no know, muddy shoes on and, and track mud? Mm. That's, that's not my this environment. My ass cheeks just clenched up just right? a little bit when right? you said that. I, just, I didn't like that. <laughs> right, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, see, see get, know your personnel, get to know me. Get to see see how I roll. You know what I mm-hmm. um what I what I would say, and I think I'm some of the people listening might think of like some of the Twitter talks and things that people talk about on the internet. And I understand that the internet is not always a real place. Sometimes it's a very it's a very mythical creature, right? Yes. They have a list going around right now of like 25 places. Don't take me on no first date. Don't take me for no mm. ice cream. Don't take me for no coffee. Don't take me for this. Don't take me for that. And I feel a lot of different ways. I feel like sometimes if you've been taken advantage of or if you've just given everything away as a person, you might be like, nah, this time I'm not doing that. You got to do this, 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 and this okay. for me. So I I get it, you guys. I, I feel like sometimes you think like, oh, well, I did this before. And so that's why mm-hmm. it didn't work. But also, like, if you're a woman like me, I do have trauma. And men scare me sometimes. So mm-hmm. I don't want to be stuck anywhere too private with you on the first time I link up with you if I don't know you yeah. at all. Yeah. Also, I don't like small talk. What yeah. I will say is, like, and a lot of people will be like, oh, well, coffee isn't a first date. Yes. The time that we spend together, if it feels intentional, is a date. Now, do I think mm-hmm. that every single one of those things... You get so caught up in dating where you can't tell if this man got enough money to take you on a on a dinner date. Like I think that there's there's a balance there, and I I want to know what is your um, input on compromise Mm -hmm. versus dating for potential? Because I think that a lot of like you said, women will come from things from a a direction of like love and caring, and and they're more feminine traits, right? Nurturing. For me, I like that kind of stuff. Like, I am an outside girl. I am Mm. a nature girl. But also, Mm. 
I'm an expensive girl. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Right. I camp in a in a luxury van. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? Like right. it's a it's it's a balance there. But how do how do you suggest someone who's been a people pleaser or um that has always just dated for potential to mm. get out of that when they jump back into dating? Because, okay. you know, these things come up and folks are like, that's not a date and that's not mm. I like mm-hmm. activities, but yeah. I need dinner. I ain't gonna lie. You talking about don't have dinner for a year? You like? Cause I, I didn't I, say a year. D- oh, I, I thought you said you. Oh uh, no, no. What I said was <laughs> get to know the. You man. know what you said on Tiffany episode? That's what it was. Right, That's right. what it was. Right. right. <laughs> it's like because again, we put too much emphasis on going out to eat. Everything is going out to eat. I'm you just know, for like, black folk, that's how we celebrate. That's how we grieve. We, that's how we laugh. That's, that's how, how we, we connect. That's, that's how we stay unhealthy. That's mm-hmm. how we end up diabetes. That's how we stand with cancer. Yeah. We, we focus too much on food. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with food. Yeah. But again, when food controls, we all talked about the porn and the alcohol. When If food is your addiction, yeah. you know, like that, that's a challenge because now you're giving more to something that's outside of you than you give it to yourself. But to your question, the... The main thing that that woman getting back in is understand the word trust. And trust for me is an acronym that I created. Is is the real you shining through. Okay. So if it, the real you shining through because trusting yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So if I trust me, I trust you. So going back to what you said about I'm scared of men. When that right man comes along, you will surrender. I promise you, you will. Oh, I believe you. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready so, to bow down and suck all the things. Oh, yes. I, I desire to let go. Yes. I, but, I would but, love it. Right. So but when he, so you want to, so the, what you're scared of, because my grandma taught me a long time ago, God authors no confusion. So there's something beautiful about the, internally what women possess, especially my black women, is instinct, your instinct. When your instinct tells you something ain't right, then that's what it is. It's not right. Yeah. When it's right, you're going to like but here's where it gets very controversial within the spirit. You meet a guy that's right, that soldier, and you ain't ready for him anyway. Yeah. Because you so you so you you've been you've dealt with so much dysfunctionality with men. When that soldier come before you, you like, damn it, feel good, but what's the catch? You know what I'm saying? What what I, what I need to be aware of? It's too good to be true. So hold on, let me say this. Now saying something is too good to be true is like saying God doesn't exist. You can't meditate. And that's when God talks to you and he reveals to you that there's a man out there for you and he presents that man for you. And then you say, well, no, no, God, you sent them to him, but no, it, it's too good. Like, it goes back to that favorite meal. You paid me too much. Uh-uh, right, get right. it back. You, you, right, asked, right. you took and, me too much. Exactly. As opposed <laughs> to, wow, this, I asked God for this and he gave it to me and it's here. Because, but this is the age-old problem. We ask for shit we're not prepared to receive. You really then big we, and you exactly. want a miracle. Man, like people yeah. say, I want to be a millionaire. What would you do with the million dollars? How would you yeah. position yourself so it turns into two million and three million? Four? Most people, they're going to go out and buy a house and go buy a, a fancy car. Gone. First two things, gone. You Especially know? in this economy. We're talking uh, about three bedroom, $400,000. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this, real, this realtor told me a long time ago, he said people typically only use 15 to 20% of their house. So why do you need a, a eight thousand square foot house and it's just you and you know and and and, and your husband and a child? That's a lot of damn house. Yeah. Uh, and I ain't got no problem with you having it, but I understand you can use your money other ways. You know, yeah, really and, being aware of what you got and and things like that. Exactly. So, I've I've found that my fear with and I know I have to find it, my transition back into dating, which is a healthier way to say that, mm-hmm. um, is not fear of the other person. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I've learned that a lot of my issues from the past were letting go and letting things end when they need to end. Right. And and finding a better relationship with letting go, you know? Mm. Um, and that comes with death. I'm talking about friendships right. and just understanding that things don't have to be malicious. They don't have to be bad. It can just no longer serve you. Right. That's a boundary. You're allowed to say, you know what? I don't really have the capacity or desire to pour into you in this type of way that yes. I want to pour into these relationships. and. What you pour into me, it you know, it's not, yes. I'm not going to say it's not worth, but I don't think there's really alignment right now. Yeah. And that can go for dating. Even if you're in a long relationship, you can be in a, a relationship and it's still meant to end and it's still be great. And, and all these types of things. Like, I don't think my marriage was a waste of time mm. at all. I don't think I married even the wrong person. He's a great dad. I wouldn't want to parent with nobody else, mm. you know? Um, now that marriage, nah. Like yeah. that, you know, but, yeah, and, and, you know, and, and, and but. there's a distinction because. It, it, it's, it's, and I tell people, first of all, you shouldn't marry your best friend. You should not. Um, because best friends, there's no expectations. 
with marriage there's the expectations. I, I, there's things that I expect from you. Mm-hmm. And and you can be a great friend, but be, be a horrible spouse. These are so the you, facts. Two, two totally different things. <laughs> and so but what you're asking for is, is for a man to be present, right? And this is what I mean by present. I'm going to give you three things. You talked about you got you found a new nail salon. You know, you, you, you see that you say you right, like that you right, like that right. We, we we know you we know you love ginger beer and we know you love camping. <laughs> As a man present, when you're talking to him, he's hearing these things. So now when you come home or I, uh, I meet you, maybe you go a gift certificate for your nails to spot. I bought you two cases of the ginger beer you like. Or well, I, I plan for your birthday. We go on this camping trip because I'm listening to you. See my smile. I'm hearing you. Okay. <laughs> ginger beer camping and nails. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's finding that man that's present, that he sees you. But in return, you got to see him. You follow me? And that's, for example, I can use myself as an example. That's been my Achilles heel in relationships because I see a woman. Like, I hear everything you say. You got to tell. I'm the one of those men. You don't have to say the same things twice. I heard you the first time. But you got to give that back to me. Yeah. You follow me? If I say, well, damn, his favorite, um, his favorite uh, thing to eat is asparagus. You know, you say, oh, well, man, I love asparagus. And then you come next, I bought some eat, baby, and you come do, come to, through the door with broccoli. Health, I told you I like asparagus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? saying? But, but what you're going to do, you're going to bring broccoli because you love broccoli. Mm-hmm. So by the nature of humanity, we love people the way we want to be loved, which is wrong. Again, don't love people the way you want to be loved. Love them the way they want to be loved. That goes back, back to that syllabi or this Talk, ask your partner, how do likes, I love you? Dislikes. How do I love you? And now here's my list. So when you when you out in the, if you out in the store, for example, what's your favorite color? Teal. Teal. The That's version of green. Version like, of green. Okay. I I'm, love green. Yeah, because only teal is my uh, thing. I got a funny story about teal. That's hilarious. <laughs> but the um, reason why, because I was shopping with my brother the other day, and I was giving him some stuff to try on. The stripper. Uh, yeah, the stripper dude. Oh, the mm-hmm, stripper dude, mm-hmm. yeah. El Dorado. El Dorado. Yeah, yeah El Dorado. Mm-hmm. Shout out to El Dorado. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and he said, hey, bro. Uh, he was asking which shirt that I, he, I said, he said, yeah, the teal shirt. I said, what the hell color is teal? <laughs> <laughs> Green, blue. <laughs> right, right. So, But then I said, for, I said, as a man, I know eight basic colors. I don't get, I don't dive into the... Red, right, blue. blue. That's all. The average man is all we know. But when he says something to me, he's where it gets interesting. He said, you forgot I worked in retail for over 10 years. Then it makes sense. Fuchsia. Yeah, yeah, right. So, like that, so he yeah. knows that because that was his occupation. But as me, I was like, why does this dude know what the hell Teal is? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know what the hell Teal is. But when he says that, like, it makes sense. So again, n- knowing what the person love is, what their love language is, knowing how to love them. Don't love people the way you love. Like, for example, if you and I engage in intimacy and you start sucking on my chest, that's your way of saying, I like my chest to be sucked on. People typically gives you what they want done in return. People avoid what they want to be avoided, typically. Does that make sense? I'm glad you said typically. I'm going to let you ride on that one. <laughs> I'm, general, I'm generalizing. People tend to do what they want done to them. <laughs> for, the, for the purpose of the example? Yeah. Yes. You are no, absolutely no, right. Speak your truth, my sister. Because I think that men be passing up on nipples all the time. Men pass up on a lot of things. Like, I know what I like, but I think I'm always that person that's trying to push the, the limits within yeah. consent. Yes. With the uh, you're gonna get me kicked off the talk, internet. Talk, you know, talk, you talking about in your relationship? Not, I'm, I'm talking about in the bedroom. Yeah. We're in the bedroom. We, we going for. But anyway, go ahead. Stay your safe word. No, yeah, that's exactly, it. Exactly. It's, it's safe words in here. Um, I, I am that person that's gonna go after. Like, have you experienced this? Do you know that you like it? And if your is I don't know. I'm like, oh, let's try it all. Because these okay. all have feelings, so we can figure out what you like and dislike. Because in, in life, a lot of men will tell you, I like this or I don't like that. In the bedroom, they just haven't tried a lot of things, which, exactly. which is a whole nother conversation for another day. Yes. Um, what I found is that a lot of my transition back into dating is really the... It was only, what, six years? I'm 31. So mm-hmm. six years ago that I realized that I had been living this lie of a life and really okay. feeling like... Um, uh, what's it called? Stockholm. It felt okay, like yes. Stockholm Syndrome yeah. because okay. it was just out of nowhere. I did not understand what was wrong with me. Mm. I was like, why do I feel like, I'm talking about anxiety through the roof. I right. did not understand my son had triggered it because it was like, this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't mm. right. It was my parents. And it was like, if if they had done any of the things okay. to my child that they did to me, 
Mm. That's when I was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't want him to go over there by himself. I didn't, Good. you know what I mean? Okay. It, every, and it was just like, no, we've worked through that. It, and so working through that, now I have to make the choices again to go back out and date. But the very first dating relationship I had after my husband, I put myself in the exact same situation mm. but the difference was instead of being with a man that i thought didn't like me i ended up being with the man that over liked me okay you know what i mean yes. and 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 i'm not going to say like that was useless or that i didn't enjoy the relationship or anything mm. like that. It, it served the purpose it was supposed the to serve you needed the attention it, it helped build back up that confidence yes. after being in a relationship where i wasn't truly desired like i, I could tell that i annoy you a little bit i could tell okay. I, could, I could tell but in the same sense, I did the same things. I wasn't being all of me. I wasn't trusting in in your right. acronym of just me being everything that I am. And so to mm -hmm. keep that love around, I wasn't reaching the the heights I was supposed to because it's like I'm never going to find another person that loves me like this. Mm -hmm. But that was an obsessive version of love and, right. and things like that, not really the healthy. And so I've just noticed that, you know, my discipline and my routine, how important it is to me because... Mm -hmm. Right now, the the biggest person I date, and I think that it, I always will have to be that way, mm. is myself. And that's because yeah. I am making up for a generational patterns that have yeah. been, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I don't think that everybody might have, might have to do this, but I think that you have to acknowledge where your shortcomings are when it comes to relationships mm. and being attention deprived for years. It doesn't matter how well I love on myself. Right. I can never get enough of it. Like yeah. I can never get enough of it. it there's yeah. a, I'm not going to say it's a black hole, but- when you're missing things in your childhood, no matter what, you can learn to deal with it. You can learn to understand. You can learn right. how to correct. It doesn't change the fact that deep down inside, you just like, no, I know better. Nope, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and then slowly and surely these things, they become um, new habits. You start yeah. creating new habits. And so I'm enjoying that, watching some of the things that I used to have to put on my calendar that mm -hmm. now I don't have to anymore. I know to do them or right. things like that. Um, but to transition, I wanted to talk about... Um, boundaries and just really understanding um what boundaries mean okay and um i think another thing that i'm hesitant about when it goes back into dating world is that i know that my marriage ended because he didn't speak up about the things that he didn't like until he already resented me mm, and okay. so resentment is a feeling that um is all too familiar you know just like yeah. coming from parents and things like that right um and so the fear is sometimes not that I won't do what I need to do, but sometimes you might not tell me the thing. And and right. with men, they'll smile through so much or it's like, oh, it's not that big a deal because they feel like, oh, I'm not mad about it anymore. So it's not a big deal anymore. Mm -hmm. And so because because men are, do really well with their masculine traits or being decisive or whatever, I think that they can get away with not being OK with something for okay. a longer time than women can. Because women don't like some boy, they speaking up. Uh -uh, like that they, they complain about a lot you know and sometimes okay. men don't and so i know that i'm definitely looking for someone that has their boundaries in check because your boundaries when you instill a boundary with me it tells me that you want me around right. i don't want you to do this because i don't care for that and i don't want you doing things that i don't exactly. care for you know right. and so getting a better relationship with that i think um is something that i'm i'm looking forward to yeah. believe it or not because if somebody willing to correct you and have that awkward conversation it's because i want you here that part. Now stop doing that shit. That that part. Part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to raise a man. You don't want to. You want him to come ninety percent, eighty five percent of what you desire is just from the um, the foundation of who he is. Meaning, like you, everything you just speaking of, you want a man that's assertive, a man who knows himself as a king. So now I can guide you. Or I can walk with you as a king, as opposed to. A man who's not self-assured, a man who's not confident in himself, and you like, you see the potential of one guy, but you have so much potential. That's not going to work for a woman like you, for example, <laughs> because you've already said, you've already, your expectations for yourself is here. And then the man, he's, he's content here. And you keep saying, baby, come on up here with me. He doesn't want to do that. Now you're upset and you pissed off because he wants to come to, you're like, I'm cool right here. But from the beginning, he was cool right here. Now you start elevating yourself because we can start here. You start elevating yourself, and then how you came into the relationship. Like now, you've learned to be your happy whole self. So now you have gotta find a man, see what his journey is like. If he comes like, oh man, yeah, my baby mama be tripping. Okay, it was nice knowing you. You see what I'm saying? Because again, oh, yeah, he's that. coming in the door with trauma. So the boundaries that you spoke of is recognizing what happiness and joy looks like versus mm. what sadness, depression, 
uh, you not liking yourself look like. So the and, green flags. What are the green flags that we're looking for? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So the the, the, the green flags like, hold on, hold on. Like, yeah, you're not a healthy, you're not, you don't take care of, like, hey, when was the last time you had your annual physical? Oh, I don't, I don't go to no doctor. Okay. But, okay. All right. Do you have children? That, <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, they mama tripping, so I don't see them that often. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, you got a job? Well, I'm in between jobs right now. I'm just out here trying, but I, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm uh, do you have, uh, you know, I know you want to go on a date. Are you picking me up? Well, my car, you know, broken down. Can you pick me up? Okay. And I'm speaking to you because if you being the woman that you are, because you've already said, hey, I got this high end camper. Like, you know, I, I'm expensive. You know, I, I like nice things. So why would you be a man who couldn't award you those things that you desire? You, you follow mm-hmm. me? But at the same time, and we, what am I giving in return for that? You know, and, and that's what the man said. Well, I don't have a problem in catering to your lifestyle, but are you going to cater to my lifestyle? Whatever that is, because everybody's expectations are different. But, but that's what we got, you spoke about earlier, having that open communication. Talk to me about how I please you. It can't be within three weeks because this has to be months down the line because we, now we're just casually just dating each other. We're going out. We're getting to know each other. We're talking. We have a phone conversation. We're texting. I'm getting to know you because 45 years I haven't known you. So I'm getting to know you from October 24th moving forward. Boundaries. Don't discuss past relationships unless the other person is present to give their version of that story. Mm-hmm. Because I can tell you all day about my ex and how she was. I listen to how people talk about their past mm-hmm. relationships. Do you tell me the part that you played in it? So I, I, I will say that I do ask like, oh, well, you know, like what happened? I do want to know. I don't want to talk about it all day yeah. and I, like or nothing like that. But I also expect when you tell me, I listen when people tell me their issue with anything, whether it's work or whatever. Right. What part did you plan? Like, tell me the truth so that way yeah, I can but, give you an yeah, honest yeah, but, response. Yeah, but that's not what's going to happen. Yeah. Because the other person is in prison to give their perspective of that story. Now, you can say, well, do you mind if we put your ex on three ways so I can hear if she agrees with this? You know what I'm saying? Because, again... It because women instinctively you know so much, but you also have this other great gift of playing ignorant. I'm gonna, pre- I'm gonna pretend like I don't see what I see. You mm-hmm. see it, but now you want to own it. Own it. That's something totally different. But so now you see it and and you entertain it as opposed to saying, "Hey, baby, this is not you're not my cup of tea." But now you eight months in and think it's I've invested too much time. But now I ask you this question: You being Samaya. Did I pronounce that correctly? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I thought... Say my name, you, say my name. Because I want to call you Samia, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, you being Samaya, say, listen, Sister Samaya, today is Tuesday, you know, October 24th. I got a great investment for you. Um, I want to ask you for $10,000 for this investment, and I'm going to give you a return of your money next Tuesday, November, whatever day that is. Um, what you, you know, say? October oh, okay. 30th. And... <laughs> What you say? And, and, and let's say you invest in. You say, "Hey, here go your ten thousand, brother. I believe I'm gonna give you twenty thousand next week." I come in next Tuesday, exact same time. Sister Samaria, I apologize, but that investment didn't go through. But I got another opportunity. I need another ten stacks. What are you gonna say? Well, first of all, let's start with the first thing. No, no, I was no. Gonna say. You know, you gave, hypothet- you gave me the first one. Why you gotta make you the get, example me? Because you're right here next to me. Just Fine. Ask. No, I'm not gonna give you the second one. Okay. So, is, so isn't it interesting how when it comes to our money, we don't invest in something that's not giving us a return, but with our hearts, we keep mm-hmm. reinvesting over and over, over again and, over and, and, and over don't get a return. Again. And be like, okay, here go my heart again. Here I think my- that it's, it ends up mm-hmm. being like a, a sign that you're lonely. It's, it's mm-hmm. everybody's um, indication that you need someone else. And mm-hmm. I, I've, I've learned to deal with... Um, I like being by myself. I've I, I realized it's so much in my life that I've lived for other people and just incorrectly. So I feel like I'm making up for a lot of lost time. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But also in success, in success, there's a lot of loneliness in um, being divorced. There's some loneliness. And, right. and, you know, whenever I do have my child, I parent, you know, on my own, there's loneliness in those things. I can admit that and being able to acknowledge it versus saying like, oh, you should never feel lonely. No, I can say that I feel alone sometimes. Like it's mm-hmm. sometimes it does feel lonely. I feel like even just giving, sit in it. You know what I mean? Sit mm-hmm. in the loneliness. I don't like making decisions when I feel that way. 
when I feel better about it, yeah. then I'll call somebody else. Because also learning how to self-soothe and learning right. how to give yourself the thing that you need before you automatically expect somebody else to give it to you or fulfill that thing. That's the thing that I had to do. I don't think that everybody else necessarily needs to do that. Like, because then you may be like, damn, you never let me help you or whatever. But I'm a single woman. I can't mm. always be like, oh, I need to feel some warmth. Let me call up. You know, that's, right. that's, that's not going to that's not going to be healthy. Um, so I think that a lot of people have to realize that sometimes the thing that you're doing is a is a it puts a sign on your head that says she'll do anything because okay. she's lonely. OK, you know what I mean? And I yeah. think that I think that for me, that's the thing I was always willing to deal with potential for way longer. And it might not have been on purpose. Right. But at the end of the day, when you are lonely or you've you've been taught and made to love your dad when your dad is just a walking ball of potential mm -hmm. if you yeah. can love the boogeyman who can you not love yeah so so now you you get your your definition of love based on what you've seen you've been conditioned a certain way but then you have the, the average person if you can learn to grow out of that because we see that our families are dysfunctional we see that our families are toxic and learn to grow out of that say i want better for myself you say i want better for my son i want better for my children because I know what I've been through. And, and, and giving your parents a pardon or forgiving them to the point where we don't know what our parents went through. For example, my mm -hmm. mom had been molested by her, by her father. And, and it was, and out of seven, it was 18 of them out of seven girls, I think six of them had been molested by the father. So you imagine going through that. And then now as older, then I looked at my sister, my eldest sister, who was molested by an uncle. And I asked my mom, well, why wouldn't you? And you still kicking with this brother. This is your brother. And your daughter told you this happened. And you didn't tell your husband. Hmm. But you're kicking with this brother because now you, you didn't protect your child. You know, you just like me. If, if you cross my child in any way that's foreign that you harm them, I'm either in jail or dead because I'm coming for that ass. But that's smiling me. in the bug shot right. around. But but because I wasn't traumatized as a child. So we come different. You were. So you like I'm not gonna experience that. But most people who've been traumatized, they give way to traumatization. They give way like, okay, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's supposed to happen. Like my auntie told me I interviewed years ago for my book, when she found out her daughter had been molested by her brother. She said, I, I didn't know what to do because it happened to me. I thought it happened to all women. You dealt with it the same way. Yeah, exactly. So when her daughter told her, she was like Okay. And she said, I was in the kitchen cooking. I just kept cooking. I said, okay, I kept cooking. That's because crazy. she's in the back of my mind because she had never been healed from it. So, so imagine your parents. We just on. bury it. We just move past it. Exactly. Then. So imagine your mom and dad, if your mom and dad say your, your dad, and he was traumatized as a child, and he never got healed from it. So remember I said earlier, people hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. When I'm in pain, I want you to feel what I'm going through because I had to go through it. I don't know this is wrong because your dad, for example, let's say it happened to him at age 11. Typically, the age that the trauma the trauma happens, we you stay, stay stuck. at that age. We stay yeah. at that age. So now yeah. he's acting as an eleven year old who was traumatized, even though he's your dad, but he's also a traumatized. It's like when my dad, who was my dad, who was a heroin addict, for example, my grandma. Because so at one point, when I found out, and I lived with my dad every day until I left home at eighteen, and I found out in my mid twenties, I'm like, wow, he had the addiction majority of his my life. Um, as a child, and I started hating my dad because here I'm out here, you know, being a therapist and trying to save the world, and you addicted to drugs. And my my grandma, aka my big mom, said something to me. It was very profound. He, she said, "You're focusing on the addict, not your dad." She said, "You ain't got to love the addict, but love your dad because the addict you're judging." But that's your dad. You wouldn't be who you are without your dad. She said, "Nobody wants to be an addict." I agree. He didn't pick that I, lifestyle. I absolutely so I had agree. to learn to love my dad and stop judging him based off him being the addict. And I think that's one of the reasons that I'm ready to get back into the dating world. I'm at a place where mm -hmm. they don't, they don't, it sucks and I have my moments. But more than anything, I just, I miss them all the time. But if I mm -hmm. can put up boundaries with my parents and not hate them for it, right. I don't, I don't hate them. I miss them. Mm -hmm. I wish that they were at a space where they wouldn't trigger me in my life. Yes. But 
because they're not, I have to take care of myself and make sure that I don't put them in a position for me to hate them or abuse them or anything like that. So I put up that boundary and don't allow them in. If I can put up a boundary with them, then there's not anybody that I'm not willing to put up a boundary for, which which lets me know. I'm ready to get back out there. You okay. know what I mean? And and, and, and take that. And, um, and, let, and let me say this before you move on from this. For sure. It's important. This is the therapist in me. And there's therapists that may, me. they may disagree with some therapists may disagree with. In relationships moving forward, not to share that trauma with the man that's coming into your life. Because remember I said there's two types of men, men who love pussy versus men who love women. If he's a man who loves women the way I do, now I'm going to take on that pain, so I'm going to handle you differently. And, and it's going to be a, a more like, oh, God, I can't believe that happened to her. And now I can't get to know you because I'm knowing your pain. Hey, you guys, just stopping by to let you guys know what's new on Patreon this month. So first and foremost, the sex position of the day is finally back. So excited to team up with my girl Dara to give you guys some new positions and not just one, but anytime we do a new position, we also give you some additional transitional positions to help you to throw it all in there for it to be a little smoother. Next, we have a new episode of Boats and Hoes. Yes, this is the bonus episode of Not Just Another Sex Podcast that I shoot with just my friends. We got a chance to talk about what we released during the super blue moon and so much other stuff. Per usual, it was hilarious. Next, we have a bonus episode of Just Another Sex Podcast. Yes, that's our bonus show. Call me corny. But Just Another Sex Podcast had a guest, Finesse's Only Club. He's a popular Atlanta podcaster who came by to talk about why women are such easy targets when it comes to being finessed. Finesse's Only Club actually went to jail for fraud. So we wanted to hear his advice because if anybody knows how to finesse someone, it's clearly him. Lastly, I got into how I've been navigating astrology without an astrologist. So I give you guys all the tips, tools, tricks, and things that I use to keep myself in check without having an astrologist at this time, without getting lost and still getting all of the benefits. And lastly, I feel like I keep saying lastly, but really this time, I also give you guys a breakdown of how I use my tarot cards. I give you guys a great example of what happened, the way I pulled them, and how I got to the interpretation of the cards. The reason that I threw these last two in there is because understanding your intuition and healing is a lot. And you guys ask me all the time how I've been able to get to this place. So I wanted to be more vulnerable and more transparent in telling you guys what I'm doing in the moment. So that way, maybe it can help you. Don't forget, Patreon is a great way to support us, the creatives, and this show. Even if you don't want to subscribe to subscribe to a monthly subscription, you can just choose the donate option and it helps us to take care of more than you may even realize. So make sure that you click the link below because we are dropping all new bonus content on Patreon every single month. So excited to talk to you guys and back to the show. I think before when I used to date, I would have said that. Yes. Now, absolutely not. Okay. One, because it is intertwined in my show and my work yes. and my higher purpose. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't walk or talk like my actions do not look... A lot of people don't know until I tell them. Right. And they're like, oh, like I didn't even know. But I have to... If, if you're my guy... Mm-hmm. Now, is that what we lead into the conversation with? Absolutely not. We right. are not at dinner. Right. Talking about something. So, my eleven year old booty hole. It was just. It was crazy. Like that's right, not. Right. That's not, we're not doing that. Right. Um, but when it comes to me having a safe place with a man mm-hmm. for the rest of my life, mm-hmm. I have to be able to be who I can't be on camera or still heal from these right. things. Like it's a, it's a forever process, and I need to know that you can understand when I need a moment, or you can understand when hey that mm-hmm. that that's triggering for me or like, Hey, I have to go back to therapy. This has come up for me or why this is a problem. I want to be able to have a a safe place. But I will say that, um, I don't, I definitely don't leave with that. Um, yeah, but so so you mentioned safe place. What may be a safe place for you may be an unsafe place for me. And that's what we have to be mindful of what mm -hmm. we give to people. Because some, cause just because I want to give you something doesn't mean you're in a position to receive it. You know, it's, it's, it's I, example, I learned that the hard For way. example, like you coming home from work and you had a bad day at work. He's like, oh, well, I'm going to get to my husband, I'm gonna get to my guy. He, they got to tell him what happened. And I'm not in a position to receive it. So I always advise my couples, stop and say, hey, baby, um, it's something I want to give you. Are you in a position you to receive it? You have the capacity. It? Right. Yeah, Can, for can this. you receive The person said, no, I'm, I'm, I have nothing to give you right now. Then receive that. 
And I'd be like, no, no, you're going to get all, I'm dumping all this on you and you're going to receive it. And it's yeah. just like, whoa, now you feel better about yourself, but now I'm, now I'm messed carrying up. Carrying the burden. Now I'm carrying. Because mm. it goes yeah. back to my mom telling me at the age of 12, 13 that she was molested by her father. I'm the child that she shared that with. That messed me up. It fucked you up. Man, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm like, huh? You see what I'm saying? Like, who gives that to a child? That's too much for me to carry. And I carried that for years. So then as I got older, I started in the dating world. Countless women I met, dad, uncles, brothers, had women molested them. And I'm like, whoa. And this is me getting into the different. And I started realizing just how frequent this is. And yeah. a lot of women, they shut off from it. They hide from it. Uh, and a lot of men, and, and it's coming in, it's not as coming, but men have been going through these mol- molestations mm-hmm. as well. But again, my encouragement is always to tell people, make sure you go to therapy. There's no such thing as, well, I got through this by myself. It can happen, but it's like a- It's, it's rare. It's, it's like a damn, uh, what's the damn thing? Unicorn? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a damn unicorn. <laughs> He's like, oh, I saw a unicorn. That's how rare it is. I, I had a bad experience with um, telling someone all of my truths um, at the end of my marriage. Um, I had been going to, and, and I, I see why it came to an end. By the by the end of it, I was a different person. I had went through therapy, EMDR. I, I was doing so many different things mm. and just really transforming and just really allowing the person that I really was to come out, not all of the defense mechanisms and all the things okay. that I had to do to stay safe in my home. I was able to just blossom and be like, okay, here's the actual Samaya. And I wanted to, well, I also didn't think my marriage was ending. So I was like, okay, I really want to tell him the whole truth, everything that has happened and gang rape here and like the Mm -hmm. in-depthness of like really what happened. And my fear was always that when I shared that story, that it would, I would be seen as nasty or like, I don't want to touch her or Mm -hmm. things like that. And the day after I told him, he broke off the relationship and, Mm -hmm. um, and said he couldn't do this. And, and what I will say is that facing that fear, cause that was always my biggest fear. I'm a share and and somebody gonna be like, baby, I can't do it. You got, you got a long road to go before you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did have a long road to go. I was okay. But that wasn't the why it was, it was more so um, what I do respect is that it was his respect for me. He was like, you were, you're changing. You're going into a different place and the truth is I'm not happy here and I haven't been happy and I'm glad that you're changing I'm glad you heard me on the things I thought you should change and all Mm -hmm. of that but where you going at this point we should you being honest I'm a be honest like I can respect that but that was one of my biggest fears and so I did face Mm -hmm. that so I, I definitely learned that like that's just not a story for everybody especially if they're not Around, you know yeah, what I mean. Around, right. and and that's the difficulty of even just dating in the public eye at this point is is all those things. But that's a whole nother right topic and, of, and, of how and to and analyze that. And if I'm that. present, and I see you, like you said, I need to. You know, I'm going off to have my moments, and even without you saying anything, if I'm present and I see you, I'm like, baby, you good? And you're like, yeah, I just need a moment. Okay, if you want to talk about it, I'm here for you. That's me saying I'm emotionally available for you if you need me. Mm-hmm. But for you to be like, well, you know I've been through so much. That's not my problem. That's something you got to figure out, something you got to work through. Making safe places to talk on both ends for and, the person that's receiving the information and, as well as the person giving it. Exactly, because you don't know what my triggers are. You know what I went through. Mm-hmm. So, you, But you feel like, no, you need to feel what I'm feeling right now. No, I don't. <laughs> no, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what this is. You know, and it has nothing to do with me not respecting what you've gone through. It's just that that's not my pain. That's not my burden, if that makes any sense. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to transition up out of here. We didn't hit some Mm -hmm. hit some things. We're definitely going to have to have you come back. Mm -hmm. Um, You see how I threw that in there? Uh, I did. You like? Did you catch it? You put in your pocket. Uh, Don't act like that. (laughs) <laughs> we gonna move on to the sex tip of the day okay. uh, the sex tip of the day is because we always got to make sure that we save a moment uh, for my first business sexual essentials which is mm-hmm. a company um, that helps people create the intimate life that they desire um, all we ask is you got to tell me what you desire you got to tell me the truth I can, and I help you with the tools and the resources, but most people aren't really willing to share their truth. So right. um, on my Patreon, if you guys don't know, we have over 250 classes, workshops, hands-on demonstrations, um, and hands so much Hands-on more. demonstrations. Hands-on That sounds very demonstrations. Demonstrations. And I'm a sex therapist, and I'm uh, trying to figure out what exactly what is a hands-on demonstration. Uh, well, for example... Um, I teach a class called Masturbation and Squirting 101. 
Okay. And there were some people that were like, this don't work, da 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 But you know how, like, as a therapist, yes. when you tell somebody to do something, you gave them the homework and they come back and tell you it didn't work. And I'm like, but what you just told me told me you didn't Did you do, do what I asked you to do. That part. And so I was like, okay, okay, you guys. And so I rented a room, got a videographer, like, great setup, like, not porn. I was fully clothed. I got you. Got two people to donate their pussy to science. Okay. And I... <laughs> <laughs> they did. Oh God! And I taught the class from start to finish on these women. I was like, "This is what I'm telling you. What what you're saying doesn't work is because you want to skip to the end of the video and be like, oh, well, I did this.' And okay. it's a process. So there's some hands-on demonstrations on there, sex position day, all type of stuff. Yeah, sh- um, shout out to the squirters. <laughs> make it wet. Right, but um, clean up after yourself, though. That's- little puppy pads. Yeah. They got the. Sp- yeah. We get off time. So. Yeah. <laughs> The sex tip of the day today. Originally, I wanted to talk to talk to you about uh, ethical non monogamy because mm-hmm. uh, a man of um, your stature has shared mm-hmm. that uh, you're ethically non monogamous, mm-hmm. and that was very interesting for yeah. me. But then you had said something at the start of the show before the, sh- mm-hmm. the the cameras had got to rolling, and we was about to get to scrapping it here. So I thought, you know what? Let's just leave it for the screen. Doctor Mahami. <laughs> told me uh, that masturbating uh, uh, was cheating. Uh, 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 and y'all uh, know how uh, I feel about masturbation. If I could put it on a sign and put some protests on there, I would. Okay. So let's 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 talk about it. Because you know I'm a I'm a I'm a huge advocate for the masturbation, the self pleasure, the all that. Okay. And all I'm that. anti-masturbating. As a man do you think that your perspective on that as a man is different because your what your super, what your superpowers do when y'all have an orgasm and what mm-hmm. my superpowers mm-hmm. do when we have mm-hmm. an orgasm are two different things. Like for men, a lot of you guys are taught to um, hold back and like, okay, like hold hold your orgasm and that semen retention. And, that doesn't work. What does that mean? It the doesn't di- work. There's a lot of discipline that works, but go ahead. At, yeah, see, you drew retention hard as hell because yeah, okay, you like, exactly. wait, you you telling me that I can feel this nut, but you want me not to nut? Right. Yeah, that's a whole. Now we're talking about some crazy shit. Okay, yes. but mm-hmm. it does circulate the energy with y'all because sometimes mm-hmm. y'all catch a nut and y'all go straight to sleep. Versus, I might be tired first thing in the morning, and I catch me two nuts and I'm ready to run a marathon. Right. Why would I not use my superpowers of being multi orgasmic? Why you Why you hating on the coochie? What's up? Just tell Tell me what's up. Well, let's talk about the science of this, people. Let's get into the science. According to Taoism, there's a book called The Tao of Sexology. Uh, per meal, healthy meal orgasm, ten eggs, eight oranges, three lemons. Uh, that's how much nutrients it comes from a healthy male mm-hmm. per a lot of uh, it's a lot of vitamins, a lot of energy. So that's why the man immediately goes to flaccid state afterwards because he's releasing a lot of energy. That's why women who swallow or who engage in in you no know, that, that, that digesting, if the man is healthy, that's it's a very good drink for you. But if he's unhealthy, she took a, a healthy shot. She right, took a, okay. healthy shot. Okay. But if he's unhealthy, you yeah, you mm. might as well drink that Hennessy gasoline yeah, combination. Well drink, go get you some dog shit and, and swallow it uh, because it's bad for you. Oh God, uh, and that's another thing. I won't even get into the whole thing of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? Because women have come to me saying, for example, they have odors inside their body, and and, and I said, well, how healthy is your man who's yeah. or, at orgasm? Inside of you, yeah, and what that's the thing, yes, the thing because if he's nasty, you're not taking care of his base of his diet, he put that inside. Now, you can all talk about bacterial infections mm-hmm. and, and that you don't know about. And I'm gonna get to the, to the question. I'm still trying when, to figure out why can't I masturbate? I'm getting to that, yeah, but but, but right now, we're dealing with you know the, the, the sperm. So, the again, having a healthy sperm. So, men, when we eject it, we give away more, and that's they've also science have stated that that's why men die earlier than men be, than women. Because we give so much, every t- with, with, with each or- orgasm, a part of our life goes with it. So we give away, we give out a lot more. So that's why you can you can squeeze two out and be like, "What's up?" <laughs> yeah, no. <without laughs> what that got to do with me? Because again, so you should masturbate. No, 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 no. That's why you should I, masturbate. I, 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 Fair. Hold on, hold, okay. Hold on. So, <laughs> so for men, we don't matter because it's such a release of power, and you need to save that power to share with your queen, right? So for the woman. Again, if you're in a relationship, right? Let's start with the relationship first, and you're masturbating. Then what's my purpose? If you if you if you plan with, because again, if we're going to enjoy this meal together, it's like eating by yourself. And but then you come on like, well, 
But if you're going to eat by yourself, then when are we going to eat together? If we eat together, we eat together. I can't have tacos before dinner. As long as I eat the dinner with you, why no, not? No, you, you can have a glass of water before dinner. That's wild. Right. I might what, need a little snacky no, snack. No, you need no snack. I do need a little no, snacky no, no, snack. You don't, no, you don't. I because, think you have a per- I think what I make myself feel and what a partner can make me feel are two different things. And also, I don't mind that, joining that's us. That's my too. point. Because I need to be you the You are essence. selfish. I need, no, you are rude. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put that on Patreon. Right? The whole, they don't need to see that, that right? side of the doctor. Right? Before we move on, we are going, before we go, we are going to mm-hmm. end with the spiritual tip of the day. Um, and the spiritual tip of the day is where we just take um, spirituality as a whole and break it down into a bite-sized piece because um, spirituality is an intimidating conversation. And you hear a lot of people like, mm, you talking about that witchy stuff or, you know, mm-hmm. what this mean and how yourself, are you talking like that? Sometimes you don't know till you get there, like why right. people are saying certain words that they are. So we just take this segment to just break down one thing and then people can go look it up for themselves so they can be in the know okay. right um so today we're talking about seventh house in your birth chart so if you've pulled your full birth chart you can go to cafeastrology.com pull your birth chart um your seventh house is the house that represents marriage and partnership of partnerships of all kinds and issues with relating to other people as the opposite to the first house of personality the seventh house just describes how you fit into the world of others planets in this house often indicate the type of marriage partner you will see and i'm a seventh house aquarius um Mm. and aquarius in the seventh house promotes an evolving and flexible approach to relationships by emphasizing uniqueness and liberty within the relationship Mm. and i just thought that that was interesting because i think that that describes all of me and the things that I am because I am very flexible person. I'm not really a, I like what I like, but also okay. I'm willing to try things to make sure that we have what works best. I'm a permutation, run all the permutations to make sure okay. that this is the thing that works. And also I, if you tell me something, I believe you. So if you say that you're polyamorous, Facts. you need multiple things. I want you to have that. What mm. I want is a certain person that's certain that I need to be there Facts. within that, you know, mm. but who you are is who you are. I've always been a person that needed multiple types of love. Um, mm. I, I don't know why. I've, I've always gotten multiple types of love. My parents didn't always show up in the way that they needed to. So, But mm-hmm. I still became such a beautiful and amazing woman. At least I think so. Yeah. And that's because of the... Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. <laughs> Even though you're giving me all these issues today. Mm. Um, it's because of the different types of love that I felt. And I'm just so grateful for the people that... Um, didn't think like, oh, well, she's not my child. I can't love her like my child. Okay. You know, I'm grateful for the people that love me like a sister and I wasn't their sister. And so mm. it's just like, I don't have these rules. Like the love that the love is love. And it, and it changes sometimes. Like I love my husband still like as a cousin, but mm. you know, I still do like right. he's family. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It just, it changes, it transmutes. And so um, I've just always been that type of free person. So if you want to know more about um, your relationship style, um, make sure that you check out your birth chart, the seventh house. The seventh house is one of the charts that um, relates to relationships. Um, and for me, Aquarius in the seventh house is a thing that says that you're a baby and you're not the best at rela- at relationships. And mm. it's because of a lot of the hardships of my life. So I had to realize that despite me being um, in the field that I'm in, it yes. doesn't mean that I'm the best at it. It means I have to be the most aware. I have to be more yeah. cognizant. I have to be. That's why I'm so checking the list, because mm. because of my circumstances, it's easy to get. Got it. Get lost. That discipline. The mm. discipline. Um, the discipline of dating for me. Okay. And so the the easier and the quicker that you um accept who you are, the better you can figure out how to use it because mm. all of it has pros and cons. So okay. um I encourage you guys to check out your seventh house and what's in there. Um and before we go, I definitely want you to um well thank you first and foremost for coming. I'm I've Pleasure. you brought such a light into my life since I've met you. Mm. Um and I'm just I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Um I hope that I keep inviting more of that type of male energy to men that's you know flexible and encouraging of masturbation. <laughs> um encouraging of those things in my life. Um but please tell the folks where they can find you, tell them mm. about um your book. And the link is going to be below so you guys can check it out. Please make sure that you rate and review the book. Um, mm-hmm. It's on Audible. And then also, if you're ever at the Content House, we have two copies okay. in the library. But uh, Look for God, you'll find me. <laughs> How do you do this? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, go, go, go to my website. Um, it's onelovecs.com. It's one love spelled out. C is in counseling, S is in services. And that's how you can find me. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook and all that, but... Uh, How old are you, Dr. Muhammad? 54. 54. Just Big turned 54, 54. Big purr. Yeah. He on his Instagram 54. with his shirt off, y'all. Yeah. 
the because uh, <laughs> what, what was funny, I, I pride myself in feeling and looking ten years younger than I am, and I uh, tell people that comes from three components: uh, the spiritual. I'm sorry. Uh, fitness, nutrition, and happiness. And happiness encompasses the spiritual. But people, again, I take a lot of pride in taking care of myself. And thus it's, uh, put it this way, uh, I've had a young lady tell me my orgasm tastes like sweet water. I heard that. Yeah, you know what I'm I saying? heard but, that. <laughs> but, Getting that coconut water. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's all about... Diet and how you feel, but that's how you coconut can, water and skittles. Yeah. Coconut, oh God, she's a coconut water and skittles. <laughs> um, but I've enjoyed. Thank you for having me as a guest, and I, I can't tell you how thankful I am for your openness, and and people don't understand you don't what you don't heal, you can't heal what you don't reveal. That's mm. my uh, my company's uh, motto, and um, you know, and, and that's how you're healing because you're revealing it and you're not holding back and. And people just don't get just how important it is when mm. you talk about it and be free with it because your problems are not new underneath the sun, as you know. It's personal to you, just like my traumas. My situation is personal to me. But there's somebody, somebody's who've been, who've been going through and sometimes, not a lot of times, when if, if you got two million viewers, it may be one person that you've impacted and changed their lives. So yeah. thank you for being that open book, that open dialogue, because I know in your joy... You're expressing, I can still feel and see, like, wow, you're still a baby at heart. You see what I'm saying? But but you, you're a 31 year old grown ass woman, but <laughs> all at the same time, like, you're a baby. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're a baby at heart. And, and you're just having that man to come into your life that says, you know what? Just rest your head here. I got you. Lay your head on my pillow. Oh, God. Not the three T's. <laughs> <laughs> I received that. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, mm-hmm. If you love the episode, whether it's this one or another one, please do not hesitate to share this with someone. Please don't forget to rate and review this. Co- this show costs zero dollars and zero cents to you guys wherever you listen to your podcast, the YouTube. But to us, this is my job. Production is not cheap, and so just you guys leaving a review and helping us to get on the charts, it goes so far. Just even sharing it within your group chats and like, hey, I, I fucks with this podcast or taking your favorite reel, reposting it to your stories. Um, it, it means a lot to me. Like I said, the I read every single one of the comments and it just, it makes me feel um, really amazing. Um, and please make sure that you check out our Patreon, our bonus segments. Um, most likely if you listen to this, this because I know we went over some of uh, the sex tip of the day, will the rest of the sex tip of the day, which got really juicy, will be on Patreon. Um, so you can check out um, bonus segments from our guests, as well as, like I said, the classes from Sexual Essentials. Or you can simply choose a donation tier just to support us and the show and the creators that help us um, bring everything together. And shout out to this amazing set. Um, Naya Abdallah, my interior designer for the SE Content House, as well as my interior designer for these sets. She she just continues to amaze me. So I'm just really enjoying the process. So if you guys have not watched on YouTube, make sure you get into these visuals. I love you guys and I will see you next time. Bye.